morning, everybody. My name is Chris Klein. Nice to see you guys here. And uh, uh, we're based out of Berlin. We're a startup. We're brand new. And we're answering the question, where's my stuff? And as more and more value becomes digital, we're all creators. And as creators, there's always the risk that our stuff is going to be stolen and when it's on the internet. And you know, this conference is all about that. You know, how do you how do you protect your stuff? How do you sell it and make money off of it? And Ascribe is looking to build what we call the ownership layer of the internet for creators, for services and people who create value so that they can better protect and control their information. We want to become kind of the ownership and licensing layer for the internet, not just for photo, photographs, but also audio, video, video music, etc. So creators want to share their content, but they also want to protect and control it. And nowadays on the internet, when you share your content, you lose control, you lose attribution. I hear stories constantly from photographers saying, you know what, okay, fine, steal my stuff, but just give me credit even. And it's the physics of bits in digital that mean that anybody can copy and share your content freely. And everybody here in this room has heard of Richard Prince's little stunt of Instagram banditry. And it's completely legal, but the question is, you know, is the attribution there and can you, as the original creator of content, reclaim and monetize your digital value? So one thing that uh, when we were setting up this company that we realized, uh, we went back all the way to the start of the internet to understand why we're in the situation where we are now. And in the 1960s, when they had, they were architecting the internet, what would today become the internet, they had thought about attribution. They had thought that every single digital artifact should be tied to its original owner and propagate as the, when it goes to the internet propagation, that it goes through and that the attribution is never lost. This was the original design of the internet. And the guy who did this, his name was Ted Nelson, and he's been still working on this project till today. They just released, I think, their second version last year, and it didn't work. It was very complicated. It was a somewhat inelegant technical solution. And what happened was, in 1989, Tim Berners-Lee developed the World Wide Web. Hypertext, he combined TCP, and all these kind of uh, protocols together, and that just exploded. And that's what brought uh, what we know today, the internet that we know today. And the reason why is because it's a unidirectional links. You only link to one thing and it doesn't link back to you. The design that Ted Nelson had was a bi-directional link. So if I have a website here and I have a website there, they're linked to each other. Architecture, that's very difficult to do. And so that's the reason why the World Wide Web exploded. And the original project that Ted had built, Xanadu, kind of fell off to the wayside. And this is why we have today this problem of attribution and ownership on the internet. That people can copy your stuff and do it relatively easily. And now we have this whole industry built up just on infringement and takedown requests. So in preparation for this presentation, I wanted to buy this image. And I don't know who owns it. So I looked on Google Image Search and I saw everybody else who used the image without attribution and I couldn't find the original owner. I wanted to. And I think that there's a lot of people who do want to buy this stuff legally. And just like with Napster initially creating demand for content and later on iTunes supplanting that by giving people an easy way to access content, we can do that with all types of media, photography also. And I think that we should make it easy for people to get content. So next time when I want to buy a photo, what happens if I could enter that photo just like in a reverse image search tool and say who's the original owner and who's the rights holder or agent who can sell that? Maybe it's a list of agents who can sell that around the world and let's say I'm in Germany and I could just go to the German site and buy that content legally, fairly, and easily. So a scribe enables creators to define um, the licensing terms and the attribution for each digital file, each digital work. And we can track each file and authenticate its uniqueness. 
But at the same time, what we do is we give this layer attribution and provenance um, that we think gives a file more value than you know uh, commissioning the work and submitting it over to the stock sites or agencies and such like that. We think that there's another channel possible for people to monetize. And to solve this, there's three things. We need a registry for digital property. We need easy legals and licensing so that people can understand it. And we also need internet crawl that searches the internet for where your stuff is and allows people to do reverse image search to find out who owns it. And for the light and for the registry part, it's something that everybody can use, creators, agents, syndicates, and marketplaces to verify the content that it is authentic, as well as to check who owns it. There's each file is uniquely tagged with its metadata and with our ascribed registry, what's I think good about this is an independent, independent, disinterested third party that can kind of be an arbiter, not an arbiter, but just be a registry of all digital property um, that gives transparency to the whole marketplace. And that's one thing that's missing now is that we have all these different databases, archives, uh, and sites where this content is spread across. And one registry solves that problem. The second thing is having clear licensing options for all digital media, not just photography, but for photography specifically, you know, if rights manager royalty free, it's easy to define this. So when you upload this content, you can choose the license and the intent on how you want this to be commercialized or even non-commercialized. We uh, just announced a partnership with Creative Commons France so that now anybody who uses Creative Commons and through the French site can both define their Creative Commons license and ascribe their work to their name so that that attribution never goes away. And so very soon, anything that's Creative Commons, um, you can do kind of a reverse image search or a reverse search on that and say, this is the original licensee and that's the attribution, this is the license for that. So we're very excited about that. And we want to make it so that it's easy to also transfer licenses to um, other people. So let's say you're a photographer and you've done commissioning work, you ascribe your work, and then you transfer it over to the agency that commissioned you. And that agency can also transfer that work over to one of the houses who bought it exclusively. <coughs> Our service allows for this. We uh, heard some stories yesterday about people hand delivering license terms and contract terms to uh, for high-end photography. And our service would allow for that to be supported. One thing here also interesting is the RDI project from the European Union. This is an ontology of license and terms that has inspired us and we're looking to work with them to make this happen and integrate this in for all digital content. So we want to make the licensing easy to see and easy to use. And finally the internet crawl. We have a, a, a cut of uh, internet search that we can um, we can do exact matching with high, high level of uh, accuracy. There's other people who do this. This is just a basic uh, reverse image search. And we're looking forward to working with some of the other players in the field to, to complement what they already offer. But fundamentally, we think that it's a new channel to generate revenue for marketplaces and syndicates. And we want to make it friction free for people to legally obtain content. People can access our site via the web or an API. So for uh, people mostly in this room, it would be by the API. But on our website, um, you can see um, the, the content that we collect, it's the attribution, it's the history of the ownership, it's a transfer of ownership. And it's important to, to state that we don't enable discovery. That's what the marketplaces and syndicates do. That's what everybody here is doing is getting the customers. We are kind of a notary layer. We don't take payment from customers. That's for the marketplace as well. And fundamentally, we don't compete with marketplaces. We want to serve as many marketplaces as there are because that's not our skill set. We're a bunch of nerds based in Berlin and we prefer to let the marketplaces, the experts, handle um, getting customers. But what we do allow is authenticity verification, provenance, the history, even the story around a file. You know, certain artworks gain value over time with a story, a rich story of who's owned it and how it's been handled. We see ourselves as a marketplace enabler. We see ourselves as someone who serves the ecosystem to bring transparency and also bring more value to everybody. So there are three founders in our group, uh, myself, Trent, and Masha. Trent spent the last 15 years driving Moore's Law, the doubling of uh, transistor capacity every 18 months. Um, and he's using that 
same technology for our service now because there's a lot of work that we need to do on the internet. Masha is an expert in the art field. That was our original beachhead market. And myself, I actually came from the banking industry where I built banks. And the reason why this is so interesting to me is that I think that digital IP is a property class. I think that what we all work with now itself is as good as land or better because it's renewable and it's unlimited. Um, and that's the link to where it came from, where from the banking side. We, we went live in early March. Our growth rate is actually 10% a week uh, on accounts and registrations, which is very encouraging. We have six marketplaces signed up. And our goal here today is to find out, you know, what are your requirements? What are your, what's your licensing model? And what would it take to integrate into your service to get your corpus, to get it registered so that we can start serving you better? Um, two of the original architects of the internet are working with us on this one. So, the, as I mentioned for the internet, there's only been one instance in the past of digital scarcity where you could, on a long-term sustainable way, guarantee in the digital world scarcity. And what is that? Each one of you has a web address that nobody else can own. That's digital scarcity. And the people who built that were these two guys, uh, Jim Rutt and uh, uh, David Holtzman, and they signed on because they realized that what we're doing is potentially creating a second way to do digital scarcity. Um, so we're very excited about that, and there's a lot of parallels to what's happened on the internet uh, domain name system and what we're trying to do with Ascribe. Ultimately, we want to be at the point of creation for all digital, and that means that when you create something, it's automatically Ascribe, and the licensing intent is clear, so that if it propagates in the internet, the attribution doesn't go away. And the applications are pretty broad. It's, it's not just photography, it's pretty much all media, all digital. And we want to be able to build attribution and provenance in. Um, and we want the entire ecosystem to benefit creators, syndicates, stock sites, um, services, and end users. And we think that by doing this, we can rewire the internet for ownership and licensing. And so if this is interesting to you, come and talk to me and join us and help make this a vision. Uh, vision of reality. Thanks a lot.